I know that every little boy and girl at some time in their lives have had a love affair with horses. I know you have, and I certainly know I have. So recently, when I was having a bit of a dark day and turned on the Hallmark Channel and found a movie called Emma's Chance, which was about a high schooler who had done some bad stuff, but her punishment was to go muck stalls at a local equine rescue. I stuck with that movie and said, oh, this feels right. At the end of the movie, I saw the credits and they said, based on the true story of Red Bucket Equine Rescue in Southern California. And suddenly it dawned on me, I'm in Southern California, where are these people? And I looked up Red Bucket Rescue and I found our next guest. Susan Pierce is the founder of Red Bucket Equine Rescue in Chino Hills. And Susan, thank you so much for coming in to talk to us. My great pleasure. It has been an enormous pleasure for me, pleasure and pain at the same time, to become a very, very heartfelt part of Red Bucket since I watched that movie. And I'm very excited to share you with the Laguna Woods community and all of our viewers, because I know we have a big heart for horses down here. And I know a lot of our Laguna Woods residents have had horses and that have even you've rehomed some horses to the area. We have. So yes. that's just been great. And what I'd love to do is share the experience that you're having now at Red Bucket. You've got 150 horses yes. under your care. That's a lot of horses to rescue. It's a lot of horses to feed and to care for. Yes, that's true. And how do they come to you? Oh my goodness, they come from everywhere. Mm -hmm. The profile of the high-risk horse has changed. You know, in the old days, um, they were the old horses that were left to die and there are still plenty of those. They're no longer valued, mm -hmm. but they're younger horses, horses that have been abused, horses who, that have lost their homes because their families have been misplaced, mm -hmm. horses that are left in washes with no food and no water, and show horses that no longer can do their jobs. Our, our doors and our gates are open to really serve all of those animals. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you have horses, donkeys, and mules. And ponies. And ponies, mm -hmm. that's true. That's true, a little tank. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, and mini horses. Yes. And so we don't want to forget anyone. But I know there are a couple of stories of horses that are there now that I've become quite attached mm -hmm. to. Nelson, for one, yes. is a beautiful guy with a real heart story. So tell us how he came to Red Bucket. Uh, well, uh, his story, of course, preceded us, and he had had his leg broken, and he was no longer useful, and he was in pain, mm -hmm. and his owner dumped him in a riverbed out in the valley, and another family came along and rescued him. They and, took him out of the riverbed. And tied him to the tree in their backyard for six long months. Oh, my. Six months of... You know, no veterinary care, not being fed properly, no hoof care, um, not being able to move. And when they realized that he was of no use to them and that he would die on their property, he call, they called us in a panic. And we went and picked him up immediately and we were shocked. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we've got some before and after photos mm -hmm. that we're, we're showing. And so Nelson is one of those stories. And now, whenever I get to go visit him and deliver an apple or a carrot or change his water, this guy has some real personality. He has really come through. Well, he's entitled. Yeah, he I is mean, indeed. <laughs> that I consider to be success because he held on to his anger and his worry for a long time. You can see it. Yeah. You know, horses, they'll, they'll show you everything in their eye. And it took him a long time to trust us, and now we're paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we love him for it. Yes. And I think that's the truest thing, is that I'm amazed mm -hmm. as I hear the stories of the different horses and their histories, how, in fact, they are willing to trust again, just given the care and love that yes. you and the team have shown him yes. and them. And right now, with 150 under care and yes. almost 300 that you've rehomed over the last 10 years. Yes. And so you mentioned the riverbed. I imagine a lot of people in the situation that we see now with floods and fires and all kinds of natural 
disasters that are requiring people's finances or the charities and the donations, they're redirecting perhaps their charity away from Red Bucket. How do you guys survive? How do you support oh, yourselves? Well, this has been the hardest year, I think, in all 10 years of Red Bucket. Mm -hmm. Shockingly, because I thought that it would get easier, but the hurricanes, the floods, and the fires of last year really put us in a deficit moving into this year. And we have not been able to catch our breath. Mm -hmm. It has been um, devastating to us. And everything we do is to try and not have the horses see that we're tightening our belts. Right. Um, I lose sleep worrying about it. We've had recent fires and recent hurricanes. And so, of course, I'm quite concerned moving into the next year. But, Lauren, we are very committed to continue our, our life-saving work and make a difference and have these transformations, um, not just of the external part of the horse, but their soul. Mm -hmm. And we laugh about Nelson <laughs> becoming entitled, but what greater joy can we experience as rescuers, mm -hmm. as philanthropists, as humans, yeah. to actually have life-changing impact? And we're committed to that. Yeah, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And I'm so honored to be able to be a part of that. And I guess what I would ask is, if people can't give dollars, because they are redirecting some mm -hmm. of their dollars, and I understand that, they may have access to things that we need, whether it's hay, or whether it's shavings for stall base, or what would you need in terms of items or things oh. that we could ask for? Okay, hay is our number one um, fixed cost $19,000 a month. Wow. That's what it costs to feed all of these horses. Hay would be huge. Mm -hmm. Shavings are huge because our horses have a bill of rights and that bill of rights entitles them to having a soft bed and a roof. Um, our tractor is broken and that might seem like a very, very small issue. Mm -hmm. We move um, manure out of Red Bucket every single day as part of keeping the environment healthy mm -hmm. and without a, a tractor to be able to move that amount, amount, amount of manure just in our farm we have a hundred horses wow. if they have 50 pounds a day of manure <laughs> you don't think about it in that kind of volume uh, uh, yeah. like I can do that math <laughs> it's a lot and we have to move that off the ranch every single day into dumpsters right. so that's huge um, you know, uh, people who will help us with marketing, social media. Mm -hmm. You know, we need people to link arms with us, to join our community. We can't do this alone. And these horses don't belong to us. They belong to all of us. And it is a 100% volunteer organization, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate. And you have your 10th anniversary, Red Ruby Red Gala coming yes. up. So let's talk about that so people know where they can come and actually celebrate with you and learn more about Red Bucket. So that's on Saturday, November 10th. Yes, it is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Okay. So people, um, it's not just a gala, it is a fundraiser mm -hmm. and it is going to be remarkable. Okay. And it takes place on the ranch with the horses. Yes. So you get to meet the horses mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to be able to be a part of that this year. And so we'll put that information on the screen for our viewers Wonderful. as well. Is there anything else you would like us to know? Well, I'm grateful to be here and I'm very grateful to be able to shine a light on our life-saving work and to invite others to come out and see the work we're doing and be a part of it. Perfect. And I'm going to send all of our viewers to redbucketrescue.org for more information. You can find more on Susan and more on the life-saving work of these majestic, amazing creatures at redbucketrescue.org. And we'll be right back. Why did you take your